Sifiwe, praise God. Let us have a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, this morning we come before you thee, so that we may hear your word and we are really grateful for giving us this chance, O God. O Lord, our humble prayer is that you may open our inner ears so that your, ha your word may have a place in our hearts. It may come and change us and also train us on the way to walk in this life and also on trusting you, O God. Thank you for everything, Lord, that you have done to us. Lord, as I start before your children, Lord, I pray that you may use me as a noble vessel. And Lord, my heavenly Father, I pray that they may expect not from me, but from you, O God, so that you, may can, you can satisfy their hearts, O God. Thank you because of your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray and trust. Amen. You can have your seats. Buenas, if you Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, my name is John Murage Wawa Johi. Uh, God is good in my heart. I'm saved. I love him. For he has done great things in my life together with my family. Uh, I'm a church elder in this district, uh, in this church and also shepherding uh, Bethlehem district. That is where we fellowship. And because as elders, we have come to realize we have so many members in our church who don't have a district. It is good you have one. And maybe if you are in a crossroad of asking where, which district you can go, uh, you, are, you are most welcome to our district. It is called Bethlehem. And we are located allowed uh, Allowed the uh, Cairo Hapa Police Station here your district here too. So Karibuni Sana. Bwana Sifiwe. So we meona ata mwalimu wakati ya mesimama hapa ame market shule. Ata mimi lazima ni market our district as also I market our church. Bwana Sifiwe. I'm happy uh, through to our church and also to our minister and also to the team that sat down and proclaimed that we that I be preaching today. And also, when the LCC leadership was told, you know, they have the powers to say, no, we don't want Murage to preach for us. But I thank and I'm humbled. So I don't take it for granted. And I'm happy. Buenas if you And I also know that you are also looking forward. You know, it is a long time since you are given a chance to, to preach or to start in front of you. But all in all, we trust in the name of the Lord. Amen, amen. So, because of the interest of time, I want us to go direct to the word of God. And uh, the theme that we were given this year of our church, we have the theme of the hand office that uh, was saying that we think about our way, our ways. And now our church, the reverend and the team, the session office, they came up with the theme of uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, that was saying about focusing on Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So when I was given the, the, the theme that I was told that th that is the theme that we are having, and the topic that you are given is about uh, Jesus, our example. So as we focus on Jesus Christ as our author and the finisher of our faith, as we keep focusing on him, so uh, today we are to think about him as our example. And uh, the theme, when we speak about in faith, about the looking unto Jesus, who is our author and the finisher of our faith, we focus for him so that we can be victors in faith, also of a good moral character in his sufferings, in his persecutions, in his serving, in his prayers. So many things we can look unto Jesus as an example of, as, as him being an example in our lives today. And out of that, I came up with a small subtopic from the topic, and the subtopic that I want us to learn is serving in humility. 
tell your neighbor serving in humility. Uh, if we go about the, if we go back one step back about focusing on Jesus Christ, we can take two or three examples that uh, about uh, Petru, the Peter, the disciples of Jesus Christ. At one time, when he saw Jesus walking on the water, he told Jesus, if you are the one, tell me also to come out of the boat so that I can also come on the water. And Jesus told him, come, because he was very sure that he is the Lord. So Peter, when he started walking on the water, he kept focusing on Jesus Christ, and by then he was not sinking. But the moment he changed his focus, he started sinking, and Jesus asked him, you of little faith, why have you doubted? So today as we speak and as we focus on Jesus Christ, I want us to keep our focus in Jesus Christ and we should not doubt, we should not uh, look sides and sides because when we look sides and sides, we shall start seeing how huge the waves are, how hard the economy is, how our faith is very little and we forget that there is the one that we are focusing. Another good example is about the bride Bartimaeus. You remember when he heard that Jesus Christ is uh, passing by, he started shouting, Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And some people were telling him, keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet. And by then, he, sh he started shouting more and more. Because his focus was that Jesus may hear my voice and may heal and he may make me to see again. Another good example is about the woman who was bleeding for 12 years. Uh, that woman, he has go, he, she has gone so, to so many doctors, to so many witchcrafts, to so many um, uh, traditionals, but when he realized about Jesus, he said, my focus is on Jesus Christ. And until I touch the hem of his cloth, I will not, nobody will stop me. So that is the focus that we are being called to do today, to have our focus on Jesus Christ. And as I had said, the, sub, the topic is having the focus on Jesus as our example, and the subtopic is serving in humility. In so many areas, we can uh, look on Jesus as an example, as our, as our mentor, or use him as a good example in our lives. In the teachings, as I had said, in the character, in forgiving, in loving, in uh, praising, prayerful, service, overcoming temptations, all those examples, they are there. And that is why I came up with a subtopic of serving in humility. Now, can we define what is serving in humility? Humility is the quality of having a modest or a low view of one's importance. Okay, you share share ku igoro ire ire igoro fio kana ire ito magawe tuo oria we tago kona mora gani alada. Okay, ni ha oga diye Okay, you na na do aria ola ali diya. Okay, you na do aria ola tu ali diya. Hamwe kana mora ikala ni hamwe nao. If I take the example of our elders fellowship here. We are all not equal. We are differently uh, blessed and also gifted. But once we in the fellowship of the elders, we humble ourselves, leaving all those blessings that God has given us so that we can be equal and uh, in mind. When we go to the fellowship of the PCMF, the fellowship of the Women's Guild, the fellowship of the place, the fellowship of the choir, the same case, they are not blessed together. But because you know your status, you humble yourself, you go low so that you can be equal with others, you can be able to walk together. So, the opposite of humility is pride. And uh, freedom, we can also modify, uh, okay, modify the, mean, the, the definition of humility as freedom from pride. We are all called to serve. There's, don't forget uh, my, my subtopic about service in humility. We are all called to serve in our different capacities. Bonus if you And that is why, personally, I always tell my district that even coming to the district, you are not the preacher, 
you are not a programmer, you are not the person who leading the prayers, the intercessor, all those. And also you are not blessed in the praise and worship or anything. You come, that is a ministry. And you come there, uh, uh, you come and sit there so that whoever is preaching can preach to you. If you, you can imagine today if all of us we are coming to preach, to get preach here, nani. So there is a ministry of presence. The way you people, you are sitting down there. Buona if you And uh, that is a call. And you must pray it and serve it faithfully and diligently. So, so some of us in the church, we are called to be leverets, others elders, others deacons, others members. You also, in those callings, you are gifted and blessed uh, differently. So, also you are also called to serve in the different uh, laws in the family. Families that God has blessed us. Others have been called to serve in the public service. Others in the private service. Others, even in that shop of yours, even if it is a private and uh, personal, I can't recall the word that we are, we are calling them when you are in the business college. Yes. You are also called to serve. And if, you, if I come and you serve me in a bad manner or in a bad attitude, do you think I will come back? Please, do you think I will come back? No. So we are all called to serve. And wherever we are, we are called to serve in, to serve Christ and to serve everyone uh, in equality. The second thing that I say, analogy that I usually use, that me, I was not created for, my, for myself. I was not created for myself. I understand and I believe that each and every one of us, we were called and we were created to serve others. As we serve God, we also serve others. And the others have been created and brought to this world to serve you. Bonus, if you were? Yes, to serve you. So today's, uh, in today's reading that we have read, and I want us to, de, uh, to dwell on the second, serve, uh, in the second reading, which came from the book of John chapter 13. It is about a very good story that we know about uh, Jesus washing his disciples' feet. Uh, before we discuss about that story, it, I would like you to understand that in tradition or in the ancient Jews, once you visit a friend, it was the uh, tradition for the guest or the, visit for, or the visitor to be washed their uh, feet. They used to wear saddles, like Zilas in our ladies, those saddles, uh, they were the ones that they used to, to wear, not a shoes, closed shoe like the one that we have. And you can remember, you can imagine in those days, the roads were very dusty, there were no malams, there were no tamaking, and so on. So wherever a guest came, it was the role of that family to wash their feet. And as they were doing that, it was being done, washing of the feet, and it was a good gesture and an honorable thing. It was being done by the lowest servant of, the, of that family. So you know, the families, they used to have slaves and also servants. The lowest servant is the one who, was, who did that law. And I was do, as I was, doing the, 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 I was doing the research, I also found that if the family didn't have a servant, the wife of that family is the one who washed the guests, uh, the feet of the guests. So having that in mind, now we visit the, the, the story that we have read. As Jesus washes his uh, disciples' feet. Number one, you sh we should think or we should remember is that this is the hour that Jesus was to be persecuted. Within a short time of 24 hours, Jesus was to be persecuted Judas was to was to to to, to betray thank you Nicole Drika Nyakiugo was to betray Jesus in a few hours. And Jesus Judas was already engaged. He was already engaged by the enemies to betray Jesus. And to make the matter worse, he was also in that midst of the guests or, or the disciples to be washed. And Jesus knew that he was where he came from. He knew why he is here, 
where he came from and where he is going. You know, that is the purpose of us. It is also good, you know, why am I here? Where am I come from? And where am I heading? Where is my future? As people, we should also know about that. So, and at that time, we also good to note the Bible was saying that it, the dinner was in the progress. I think they, it is, they had already been in served and they were eating, they were sharing the dinner. Uh, and once, now they are guests in that room. So what happened? Jesus, as they were eating, he took the basin. Number one, he took off the outer clothing. Akaziwe kashini. Alafu akashukua towel, akajifunga. The way the ladies uh, uh, lap the uh, shukas in leadness to work. He then put water in the basin and started washing the feet of his disciples. And as he washed, he wiped them with the, with the towel. He was serving and preparing his disciples as how they should be serving others. He was showing them as an example. Uh, as I was doing this study, there is a, a businessman in America. He had started very humbly. And the, the business, it grew into Kua Kubo Sana. And one day he was being interviewed and he, he was asked, why has your business grown so much? And he said that it is because of using MBA, M, M, M for man, B for boy, A for what? For people. <laughs> MBA attitude. You know, if, you, if I tell you about MBA, you start seeing about the, the education, which is Master's uh, Business Administration. But it was, he meant mop at the bucket attitude. That he can do anything in that business so that he can be understood. And that is the attitude that Jesus had. Remember, he is the leader, the teacher, and, a, and, a, and a, a senior person. But he is the one who is doing the lowest. The work that was done by the lowest slaves, the, 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 the mildest slave, the wives, the work, that is the one that he is doing. It was for, if it was for display, he could have done one or two or three uh, uh, disciples and then he tells them to continue. But now he was doing it deep from his heart and wholeheartedly regardless of his status. You can imagine how the dirty, the feet was, how the the, you know how, 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 how the feet smells, eh? very bad. But he did it, might, but he was serving. So, as he continued, <coughs> if you, in the first reading that we did, in verse 24, get the, the disciples were arguing who is the greatest. You see, this work was for the rest person. So, one of the disciples could have done it and uh, watch the others. But remember they were arguing who is greater than the other one. And that is why they did not. So, <clears throat> none of the disciples were willing to wash each other's feet because they had that attitude, who is greater. When we go to the choir, to Nakuta Wanajiuriza, who is greater than the other one. When we go to the praise, when we come to the fellowship of the elders, when we go to the women's guild, when we go to the district, we are arguing, I cannot do that because it is not my role. Because I'm greater, I got a greater, uh, a, a greater, uh, none of the disciples were willing to wash each other's. So, Jesus decided in his heart that actions speak louder than the words. Telling was not enough. It was good, but it was not enough. So, he showed them, he showed them literally and they illustrated his mission. There are some figuratives that I want us we understand, or I want us we read from there. Few of them. At number one, the Bible led that Jesus 
loaves from the table or dining table so that he can wash the rest and a place he can wash the disciples and in the dining table it is a place of rest and comfort and also for refreshment same case our Jesus Christ rose from his throne in heaven a place of rest and comfort and honor to come to earth to serve us Jesus he did it halato thoma yauga atiriri Jesu nake agiyukira methaini hau mariyagira na agika maundu macio mangi twaigua the same case figuratively he rose from the throne of heaven and he came to die, to earth and in humility he became a man so that he can serve us point number 2 he laid aside his garments akiruta nguo ciake ciaja taking off his covering he stayed like naked person when he jesus laid aside his glory when he was in heaven he was a glorious person he was the second to command and all that garment akaiweka shini so that he can come to 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 earth and we to serve us with humility point number 3 he took towel the way our wives and our mothers wanashukua shuka wanajifunga he took towel and wrapped in his waist it is a significant ya kuonyesha that he was ready to serve now when the uh, ladies wanataka kwenda kitchen wanataka kuvua wanataka kuosha wanajifuga hiyo lese uh, leso uh, lady to serve jesus christ was also lapping the towel lady to serve are you ready to lap a towel so that you can serve are you ready to remove the, your uh, your glory so that you can humble yourself and be ready to serve the point number 3 uh, number 4 is that jesus poured water into the basin that is what the bible read that he put water into the basin so that he can be ready to wash the disciples same case his blood was dripped in the cross because of you and me and the last one jesus afterwards jesus sat down and he put on his clothes the same case when he finished the mission when he was crucified he went back to jesus christ and that is why we say in the in the apostles creed that he sits on the light hand of god bonus if you will so we continue now we go back to the story that we were, we had when he was when he was washing the disciples he came to the point of this guy called peter and peter said jesus are you going to wash my feet jesus said yes because he was doing it uh peter said no 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 you cannot wash me i am the one who is supposed to wash you you are greater than me but jesus said that if i don't wash you your feet you have no praise with me <laughs> bonus if you will you see now peter was just a pretender he was pretending i told you in the last in the second verse that we are uh, the second first reading that we did the disciples were arguing who is greater than the other but when peter saw that jesus has already started washing uh, the disciples feet he thought that i i could have done this but he did do it initially so he was being challenged by jesus christ and he said no 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 you are not going to wash me but jesus said if i want to wash you you don't belong to me and he went on ahead and he said lord if if that is the case wash my body and my head too bonus if you were do you understand what i'm saying akikorwa ogwo niguo mwathani kuriri ona mwiri wa kwa riu thambia ona kiongo gya kwa riu githambia no thio you see initially he was saying what you are doing is not good but when he was spoke by jesus and he was told that if i don't wash you you don't belong to the kingdom of god he said then what you are doing is so little can you do me a great favor of washing me and they had that and they started conversing or having that conversation with jesus christ so today 
you cannot, if you don't want to be washed by Jesus Christ, it is good to know that you don't belong to his kingdom. Literally, he was washing them with a bucket of water or with a basin of water. But today, we are being washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, Peter was saying, washing feet is too little. It is not enough. But Peter had a hidden pride. And that pride could not allow him to be washed by Jesus Christ. We show servants or service. Okay, what I want to say is, when you want to serve, not only serving, but also receiving. Uh, service, we always say that love is a two-way sword or a two-way traffic way. Service is also a two-way traffic way. As you serve, you are also being served. Bonus if you But you'll see some people, they don't want to be served. Anagaria, ninani huyu anakuja, kuni serve because of his status. But I want, I'm, allow, I'm urging you that you let your heart to be full of hum, humility and humble yourself so that no matter, what, no, no matter who is serving you, you accept the service that you are getting. So as you serve, remember you are also being served. Now, out of that long story, what have we learned? If I have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another. That is the command that Jesus gave. Bonus if you will. If I have washed you, your feet, you also ought to wash one another. As you wash the others, number one, you must be humble. Bonus if you will. Praise God. You know, without humbleness, you cannot wash me. Remember your status in this society. Unajiuliza, with all my status that I have, can I be able to wash Elder Murage? With all the status that I have, being an elder, can I be able to wash the feet of my district members? Can I be able to wash the feet of my fellow elders? With all the status I have as the chairman of the LCC, can I be able to wash the feet of the smallest group, that is the Sunday school? So, ye must be humble. Come down to the year levels. Point number two, you cannot wash them without, or wash us or wash me without loving. Love is the biggest and the greatest commandment that Jesus left. He said, love one another. He said that if you want to be done it to you, do it to the, to the others. He also said that if you want to be great, be a servant. So, you must have the heart of loving. You must have the heart of loving so that you can be able to serve in humility. Love covers multitude of sins. Number two, number three, if you want to serve in humility, you must have the heart of forgiveness. You must have the heart of forgiveness. Remember, Jesus washed the feet of Judas. He washed the feet of Judas and he knew that within the next 12 or 24 hours that this guy is going to betray me. But because Jesus was very forgiving and he is also very welcoming, are we forgiving? Are we welcoming in our groups? Are we welcoming in our districts? Are we forgiving in our families? Are we welcoming our spouses? Number four, do not criticize or gossip about the people that you are serving. See, when you are serving, I always tell my children that sister weka kiatu to kieda form form one. Na igina ilikuwa ya, ya sadak. Tunaweka sande, wakati, sande, ya kwenda church, sande school. Na, na jua ikiwaka, you can, you can imagine how it was, because it was sadak. And ane mwoke menya, our legs, mayorete meyatoka. Mage maikarete ogonyore maareto nedutu. Na maudu mageta mashio. Jesus is telling us, when you are washing me, do not criticize. Bwana <laughs> sifiwe. Accept me the way I am. And wash me the way I am, and I will be clean. 
Do not dwell in my weaknesses. That is for the world. That is for the world. For the world. But for the Christian way, we are being told to wash their feet regardless of the way they are. Number five, never get tired of doing good or give up. Don't give up in washing one, one another's feet. Kaigotora gote idagia. Kaigotora demwe kagerou. Kaigotora demu heaga idio. Never get tired. Your blessing is on the way. Bona si fiwe. Jesus, when he was serving the disciples, he never got tired. He served them. He never got tired. Uh, even when he was uh, discussing the issue with the Peter, wanaulizana, ai, ni utaniosha kweli, apada ni lazima ni kweli. He never got tired. But today, I tukaka eruta kwa mweruti, tukasha utha nereria, which is not very good. And the last one, Equalize everybody. Iganania do the equality. See, I don't remember to be kuiganania as you serve because you are serving not for selfish gain. You are serving for Christ. Equalize everyone of us. One as if you were. Equalize everyone that you are serving. If you come to the district, if you are the elder, equalize everyone. If in the it is in your family, equalize everyone. You know how what happens. Uko kwetu nyubani. Because most of you can see me age mate. Unakuta kuna wazazi wegine. Wanaveva some children because they are more blessed. Even us. Wanaveva other children because we are much uh, learned than the others. But we are being called to, uh, to equalize everyone. There is a story that is being given. That it is a real story that happened in America. During the American Revolution. The first president was called uh, George Washington. Na niye tunaonaga pisha hake ikiwe imeshoro hapo kwa the Yamane Dora. Uh, as they were doing, uh, one day he was riding, and he was alone. He was riding a, 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 a horse through the city. And he found some soldiers, uh, they, were doing, they were making some war for their own protection. The commander, he was just giving harsh our commandments was with a lot of authority and the soldiers were very tired. Sorry. And the soldiers were very tired. This guy, the, the person who was riding this donkey, uh, the, uh, the horse, he went to the, to the commandant or the corporal. He told him, you are not fair because you cannot help these people. You are not guiding them. You are just giving them harsh authoritatives uh, commands. He told them, you man, don't you know that I am, as I am the uh, commander? Don't you know I am the uh, commander? So this guy, he came out of the horse and he went to the soldiers. He helped them to build the wall, literally. And once the wall was done, he went back to the, to the guy and they told him that once again, that when you want somebody to help you, Go to your commander and he shall call on me. That guy was George Washington. When he went back to the office, all those soldiers that were building the wall, they were promoted and the guy was demoted. Why? Because he was serving he didn't with the pride. He was serving with the pride. You see what I'm saying? So if Jesus Christ comes today, will he find us serving with humility? Bible examples in the Bible, we can remember of the people who served in humility. We can remember about the Elijah and the widow of Zalaphath. The one that he had the only one meal to eat with his son, then they die. And he told, go and bring it. He did it with humility, not knowing what happens next. We can remember what happened next. Whenever he wants to become great among you, must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be the slave of the others. That is the, second, that is the first reading that we did. So, the Bible says that if you want to be exalted, humble yourself and God shall exalt you in his due time. Praise God. The last story that I want to give is about the Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, he, went, he was being uh, interviewed one day. 
and he, he was, and she was um, with a, the interview was a, a big radio station, a very big uh, radio station. And as the, the presenter was doing the interview, she asked Mother Teresa, what can I personally do for you? You know, the presenter thought that it is now a chance for her raising to Mother Teresa so that she can get money for the charity work that she does. But to amazement, Mother Teresa told him, yes, there is something you can do for me. Go and look for someone who, is, who nobody loves him or her and love that person and you have done a great thing for me. Buona Sifiwe. Same case to us. Jesus Christ is asking us, is there anything I can do, we, uh, he, you can do for me? And we are saying yes. He is telling us, go and serve those little ones. And especially the Bible says, those that you don't expect to repay you back. And you will have served Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and do you good. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. Thank you for reminding us that you have called us to serve in humility. Most of the times, Lord, you have come uh, visiting us and you find us that we are not serving. We are also not serving in humility. We are serving in pride so that we can, people can speak about us so that we can live, uh, we can be proud. But Lord, today you have reminded us that we need to serve in humility. Lord, whenever that you, have, you can be able to search our hearts and see pride, Lord, we humble ourselves that you may forgive us and continue teaching us in serving you in humility, serving others in humility, just as the woman that was offering in the church. And you said he offered only two cents, but you said that she is the one who gave more because she did it with a lot of humility. Lord, give us the hearts of humility whenever you find us lacking. Thank you for everything, Lord, that you have done to us. In Jesus' name we pray and trust. Amen. 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 Say amen. 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 Thank you, Elder Mulage, for that uh, powerful word. It is time for uh, the offering, and we will be led by Elder Mrs. Mulady.